Que lo que, que lo que, que lo que, mi gente. This is your boy, Rick Diesel. Welcome to another episode of the Migo Experiment. Today, we have somebody super special, a gentleman that goes by Mr. Julio Macias. Julio Macias, um, he's appeared on the show On My Block, and he's also on the Selena series, which is amazing. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are watching out there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, con nosotros, Mr. Julio Macias. Hey, Rick, what's up? Un placer, compa. Thanks for having me on, dog. How you doing, brother? How you doing? Man, Chilling, um, you know? well, Julio, man, listen, brother, I was telling some folks that I'm interviewing you. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know you're a big hit with the ladies out there. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. I'm just doing my work. You know, where it lands, it lands. You know, you're doing it well, brother, and you're doing it well. Well, Julio, man, to start off the conversation, brother, um, can you tell us a little bit about your Latino background and yeah. how you got started in acting? Yeah, yeah. Bueno, pues yo soy mexicano. I was born in Mexico City, uh, you know, back and forth flying between L.A. and Mexico City. So I kind of grew up on both sides and also on neither side. So it's like that weird in between. Right. Uh, came to the States and actually settled here when I was eight years old. Uh, my pops. He uh, he runs a business that he does a uh, uh, dubbing for movies and TV, you know, and something that my grandfather started. So my grandfather was, wanted to be an actor uh, in Mexico. Uh, he was really good in getting with people, but he just wasn't uh, dedicated, I suppose. You know, he wasn't really uh, like an actor, actor, right? But he like he knew how to schmooze people and knew how to make connections. So he got like a couple little uh, movie deals through Warner, and he's like, "Yo, give me your films." I'm gonna translate them to Spanish so that people in Mexico can watch it, right? So that's how, like, how the nugget started, right? And so I grew up around voice actors, you know, in, in these studios watching these actors kind of give uh, life to, you know, for, for shows like Friends and, and, you know, movies and, you know, uh, Forrest Gump and stuff like that and watching another actor give it, you know, in Espanol, which was like super dope. Um, so that's that's kind of how I got into it. I was kind of always around it in a way, you know, from a distance, not necessarily on set, you know, but also I kind of knew that the entertainment world was a business and not just, you know, something that you consume. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, that's how that's how I got into it. And um, and it's interesting, you know, uh, I really found I think that I found my my Latino ness, my 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 Mexican ness, my Chicano. I call myself a Chicano. I think that that's the most appropriate term for for what I am. Um, later in life, dude, you know, because like I, I born in Mexico, you're you're just proud, right? But you come over here at such a young age, you kind of want to assimilate as much as you can, like as quickly as you can, right? right? And um, and so I did that, and so all through middle school and into high school and high school, I went to Miami, my parents moved to Miami. And, um, and that was a, another different experience because like my parents would always say that, uh, not anymore, but like definitely like the late nineties, early two thousands, it seemed a lot like uh, people didn't want to speak Spanish in Los Angeles, you know, yeah. like they're like, you know, they made it a point to, you know, speak English and speak English and speak English. You go to Miami, bro, todos están hablando Spanglish, you know, yeah. They're all over the place. Um, and so that kind of like, you know, lent itself, you know, me and my sister kind of opened up more to our Latin heritage and whatnot. And then when I came back to L.A., um, you know, I, I went to film school. I linked up with a with a director um, who is also Mexican. And, you know, we did music videos for Gloria Trevi and uh, what's, his name? what's his name? Royce. We did a lyric for Royce. Royce. Yeah. Uh, Victor Manuel, who wow. else? Uh, a lot of like Sony Latin artists at the time. And that kind of like, again, put me into the mix of Latino and this and that. And then I did a play called the Mexican Trilogy. And that right there, my dude, that was to me like an eye opener of, you know, I, why am I running away from being authentically everything that I am? I speak Spanish fluently. O sea, yo hablo en español con mi mamá y con mi hermana todos los días. Sí. Entonces, no es de que no sé hablar español, no. Sí. It was just trying to be like, no, 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 I just want to be an actor, not a Latin actor. And then the more that I worked, the more that I realized it doesn't matter what I want. It's what the people want and also what casting is going to put. Casting already labeled me as a Latino before I even had a chance to come up and say, yo, I'm this or I'm that, right? Mm -hmm. So right after that play, that's when I leaned into it. I was like, you know what? I'm an actor, but I'm also Mexican and I'm just not going to stop. I'm going to stop fighting, you know, 
being typecast or this or that, la la la. And that's when I got the role or the, the audition for for on my block. Uh, and I sent it to my mom and I was like, yeah, what do you think? She's like, no vas a hacer un cholo. No, I was like, Ma, it's, it's a job. <laughs> I got I to gotta do what I got to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I read, I read, I read one scene where it's, it's me and, and Diego or Caesar uh, on the beach. And I was like, yo, this is deeper. This is actually giving us some backstory, some, some, some context as to why Oscar Spooky is doing the thing that he's doing. Um, and when I saw that, I said, all right, you know, no disrespect to all my Latino brothers and sisters out there, but if if this is a Mexican American character, I'm gonna have a Mexican American play him, yeah. you know, and I'm gonna try to be as authentic as I possibly can. Even if I'm not from the hood, I can I can look back at the history of of struggle of Mexican Americans in Los Angeles. You know, how do we go from the border crossing us to the Zoot Zoot riots, all the way to you know what we're ha what's happening in in this fictional world of Freewood with the Santos, right? Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of how I, I grew into my Chicano ness, I suppose. Brother, brother, let me tell you something, man. Omera, eh, tú decidiste bien porque la carrera de actor es justo para <laughs> ti, mi hermano. Perfecto. Um, and I was just in Miami a couple yeah. weeks ago, brother. And if you don't speak Spanish in Miami, you're weird. That was, yeah, so, that was crazy. Por eso mis papás se fueron a Miami. They're like, yo, we're just going to speak Spanish. Let's go. <laughs> el, el primo mío me dice, oye, esto se siente como Santo Domingo. Pero con leyes y con dólares. I was like, true. I get it. Yo, I, get it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. But my dad's favorite joke is like, you know, the best thing about Miami is it's so close to the United States. <laughs> it's good. It's true, though. <laughs> Bro, but, well, look, man, uh, talking about On My Block, man. Uh, on My Block is an amazing representation, man. Of, of of black and brown people together, um, being being the forefront characters in a series, I love that man, and especially in a time where Latinos are so underrepresented in Hollywood, it's it's amazing to see you and others be the the pioneers of mm -hmm. of this new resurgence resurgence, you know, of what we need to see, you know. Um, I wanted to ask you about your character, Julio, brother. Okay. Yeah. So Julio, and you do an amazing job as Julio, to be honest with you, brother. Like <laughs> your demeanor. Julio right me there. or like or like Oscar? No, no, no. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. As Oscar. Yeah. As Oscar. You, see, <laughs> I get it kind of confused because I, as I was looking at the series, I realized that you changed your look from how you look right now. That's yeah. how you looked as Oscars. I was like, huh? Okay. So excuse me, brother. Yeah. yeah. But no, um, sure. as as Oscar, you do a great job as him, brother. Like you get real mean. Like you remind me of some dudes that I know. You know, yeah. I was like, I, I, I've seen this guy before, <laughs> and I know he's probably seen these guys before to be able yeah. to depict this guy. Oh you know? yeah, 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 for sure. So that that was amazing. I do want to ask you this. Um, doing research on you, man. Watching other interviews, I heard you say that. Uh, uh, Oscar was spilling into your real life. How does something like this happen? And how do you work on, on, um, how do you work on, 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 uh, on getting this correct in your real life? You know, not letting that character mm -hmm. spill into your real life. And how was he spilling into your real life? Yeah, yeah. So you know, I'm 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 forever grateful for 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 playing Oscar. You know, for for he gave me a certain strength and presence that I never really carried, you know, um, I carried myself more of a kind of like a goofy guy. Right. Um, but yeah, growing up in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> so I, growing up in LA, uh, I lived out in the Valley, like way, way, way out, uh, by, you know, horse country, but it's, it, the areas were very much either like there was people that owned horses and then there was like, like Chicanos. Right. Um, and then my mom, because of her upbringing and how you know the idea of the immigrant and wanting to keep you know the betterment of life and whatnot she very much separated herself from like oh those are mexican americans we're mexican you know and like that's something that me and my sister broke down real quick but that's how she you know that's how she treated it right yeah. uh but i saw these fools like walking up and down my street you know i saw them and and it was uh i never associated it with a negative context i just thought oh these people are listening to mariachi you know these guys are getting down with with uh, 
in rancheras and whatnot, the carne asada on the weekends. So, you know, growing up, I, I saw people like this around my neighborhood. Um, and I never had any negative contacts on them until I started watching movies where I was like, everyone's looking mad scarier in the movies than they are in real life. In real life, they're just living their life, right? And, um, and yeah, so when I had the, ch the opportunity to play Oscar, I, I, I remembered that. I remembered that this, this sense of hostility or this like, you know, presentation was it for the homies? Was it for the people that, that, you know, these people were living around? It was for the outside community. Um, and then, you know, me thinking psychologically, how did, like, why is that? You know, uh, I didn't have the historical context, you know, because my history was kind of split, like, you know, from, you know, uh, elementary through, I don't know, eight, nine years old. Uh, I learned only Mexican history, history of, of, of Mexico. I had no idea what was going on to our people over here in the United States. So when I came over here, uh, we were all, they already passed that stuff. So they were talking about, you know, they, they did the founding fathers and then they went over to like current events. Blah, blah, blah. We skipped, I, I did not know about the Chicano movement. I did not know about, you know, the, the civil rights movements. And, and every time that the civil rights movement was, it was always in the context of black people, which is fantastic. But there was no, there was no bridge for me to, 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 to see what the Mexican American representation was, right? Yeah. So when I started doing my own research in college specifically, that's when I went to like, I did Chicano studies and whatnot. And um, I said, okay, so first the border crossed us because we were here, right? The Mexican Americans were here already in California. And then after that, we were mistreated and then sent back, you know, people that were actually born American citizens were sent back to Mexico as Mexicans because they were undesirable or whatnot. And the, the county started going from the center being predominantly Mexican or Spanish, Spanish, Spanish descent. You get the Anglos coming through and then they get displaced, 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 displaced. Uh, and that's when you get into the forties, fifties and you get into the zoot, zoot riot situations where the navies uh, were stationed in, in, in San Diego, Los Angeles and, and, and uh, in San Francisco. Right. And you have, the people that are supposed to be the authority figures, right? The police, the army, the Navy, who are coming into these neighborhoods and just whipping them, yeah. right? Um, and so that's when the, the sense of, of guerrillas, the sense of like, you know, Emiliano Zapata wouldn't, wouldn't like stand, like wouldn't take this. So we're not gonna take this, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start patrolling and protecting our own neighborhoods. And soldiers, uh, you want your soldiers to be intimidating. You know, so these are these are the uh, the um, the shields and, and the, the suit of armors that we that we put on ourselves to be saying, hey, don't come into our neighborhood unless you have good intention. But most of the time, the people that were coming into the neighborhood didn't have good intention. So we had to put that barrier. We had to make sure that, you know, uh, if you're going to come in here in peace, that's great. If not, then, you know, back off, fuck off. Mm -hmm. uh, and through the years that got corrupted you know, the war on drugs started happening and, you know, these, these, uh, if you want to call it community protection groups started morphing and twisting into these gangs. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it just got all kinds of twisted from there on. But the, but the kernel of, of truth was still there, which is how I always played spooky. Spooky was doing all of this for his brother and right. for the protection of his brother and his community. All that other bullshit was things that he had to do to do that, that goal. Right. And that's why he's always going by the code, by the code, by the code. And, you know, people like Sad Eyes and Joker are like, dude, what are you talking about the code? We're trying to make money. He's like, bro, I'm trying to protect my brother, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so when I got the first season, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all in. I know that I'm not this person, but I know that I have the skill and the ability to play him truthfully. Um, and the only way to do that is to embody him. Now, I don't mean like uh, method acting where I was walking around talking like him. But one between action and cut, it was boom, let's go, right? And I had to build myself up physically to think it, my, my, my idea was, you know, the biggest bear in the woods doesn't have to fight if everyone's scared of him, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So let me, let me build myself up. And then I didn't realize how big I was, you know, I'm, I'm 6'1", and, but nobody ever got out of my way. Season one, shaved my head, got big bro 
the amount of times that I got pulled over by the police, the amount of people that just walked, you know, like, I'm like, all I did was hit the gym and shave my head. And suddenly, like, people don't fuck with me. Um, and that was like, that hit emotionally. And so when that has, you know, this is something that uh, a lot of these people have been going through their entire lives. So there's that callus. For me, it was a raw nerve. For me, I was like, it was like me suddenly learning all of this shit, like on the fly. Um, and that affected me and that made me angry, you yeah. know, and then I channeled that anger into the character and then the performance was great, but I still carried that anger with me. Yeah. So, you know, I was coming home and when Julio was usually about like, Hey, uh, what are we going to have for dinner? What do you want? What do I want? Now is like, Julio wants this for dinner. Oh shit. Okay. I didn't, you know, um, and you know, you do get, <laughs> you do get a little bit swept into it and you're like, yo, I have this power where if I demand things, if I say something with authority, it's just going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and like we say, things get twisted and, 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 and perverse. And, and that happened a little bit where it wasn't that Oscar was walking around my house, but that vibrato, that like intoxicating feeling of power did come with me home. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to handle that because I never had that kind of power right um that kind of presence anyways and uh and yeah after that first season actually after the second season really I, I i it was taking a toll on me i was just angry all the time you know i i was you know when when i used to be very optimistic about the future now i was like man it's all going to shit <laughs> you know uh and i said yeah, good on you julio for you know learning these truths about your people in this world and in this country, but that's not you. And you need to get back to you mm -hmm. and you need to figure out a way to be as good as you are without jeopardizing who you are, you know? Um, and that took some, some, some learning, you know, those, that took some curves. Selena was a, was a great uh, detox, if you will. Cause I, I, you know, I got offered, uh, other other gangbanger roles and and it's not that i don't want ever want to play it again right. it was just that pete was just left field from that and i was like let me do that let me let me swing the bat the complete other way well see what happens well hold on real quick big brother i'm, I'm gonna get to uh, i'm gonna get to selena i'm gonna get to, i'm gonna get to selena um so okay it's crazy how how um spooky starts being this you know, big aggressive guy in the first one, he's mean, kind of asshole-ish, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, you definitely see that he's protective, like he's a protector, you know? Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't play any games. But towards the series, towards the end, it's like he's he's righting his wrongs, you know? Um, how does it feel for the series to be ending, brother? Um, I know you got a lot of sad fans out there that love <laughs> to see you do your thing on that show. They're like, I don't want to watch the show anymore. <laughs> they say they're going to have a spinoff. If he's not on it, I don't want to see it. I don't know. Yeah, I am with it. I am with it when it's spooky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, um, as a storyteller, you know, my grandfather told, always tells me the, the, the reason that life is beautiful is because there's an end to it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the reason that stories are special is because they have an end to them. You know, uh, talking about like sitcoms like there's a reason why sometimes it's just like yo i don't ever want this to end but also can this end because this means nothing anymore right yes. uh i think that the fact that this is this is this is in four seasons right i think that the fact that you know oscar goes down in the way that he goes down instead of like robbing a bank i think that the, the reason that people are feeling him is because they did see that redemption they did see that twist that did they did see that turn and now it hurts and because it hurts, it matters, yes, I sir. think. Yes, sir. You know? no, no, you're, you're completely right. You're completely right. Yeah. I, I have friends that are young Latinos from the hood who mm. start off you know, with, a roughy, with, with a rough upbringing. And now towards the adulting of their life, you know, these guys mm -hmm. are working at banks, working at restaurants, have families, open, mm -hmm. trying to open up businesses. They're like, all that old stuff, I'm not on that. And yeah. your, your character was on that same path. And you're, you're right. For him to die makes it even more impactful. Like he had a future. Oh, my God. But it's so what, what, what you know, I, the thing is, you know, one one person in, uh, asked me, like, uh, 
aren't we tired of seeing violence done on black and brown bodies on TV? Can't we have a win? Can we have like a good story, a happy ending? And I'm like, I absolutely believe that we should have a happy ending, but there got to be consequences to how deep Oscar was. Oscar wasn't dipping his toes. Oscar was, you know, over, yeah. he was, he was swimming. Whole body. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was swimming. Yeah. Um, sure. So he was wet. So, you know, that that's got to get back to him at some point, whether that's financially, physically, emotionally, that that was going to come back at him. But what I love about how it was written is that we know how it goes down. We saw it all last year. You know, um, it wasn't sadness anymore. It was ang- it was straight up anger. Everyone was like, we're done. We're done. We're done seeing our people get murdered. We're, we're done with that. Yeah. But say that you know you're saying that like a lot of girls fall in love with spooky right yeah i want to have uh you know Brittany from from milwaukee who doesn't have any latino friends right and sees this show and falls in love with that character and then sees him die that way after he was getting his shit together right and it hurts because yeah. it humanizes spooky spooky's no longer spooky you're like oh spooky's a name like that was a persona who he is is oscar right so when she goes to Dallas and visits Dallas and she sees like two homies coming down the street, I hope that to her, she remembers Spooky and says empathetically, whatever they're portraying on the outside, it's part of them, but it's not the whole story. Exactly. And I can't just clutch my purse because mm, they look a little scary. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to understand their circumstance. And, and I, I, I hope, I hope that uh, from the, from, from, the connection that people have with Oscar and because he lost his life so tragically trying to do the right thing that people say, Oh yeah. What, what would have happened if he had better opportunities when he was younger? You know, what if there were social services that would could have not taken away his brother, but helped him raise his brother, you know, when he was there. Uh, I remember season one, this, this one guy, I, I mean, I don't check my DMS no more, but it's season one this guy, he hit me up. He's like, yo, uh, I want to let you know, thank you so much for your performance. Um, I was in the life I'm, I'm rehabilitated now, you know, I'm, I'm working on, you know, my hours and whatnot. Uh, but my daughter doesn't speak to me. She saw the show and she reached out to me saying, dad, I don't forgive you, but now I understand, you know, wow, it's those tiny little things. Um, nice. yeah. So, so, uh, I believe that. Yeah. Show I, I believe yeah, that's going to make an impact right now, brother, and for the future. Yeah, man. That you know, I keep telling my agents. Of course, I can't, I want to keep working, but if I never work a day in my life again, I created a character that's going to live on. Yes, that, sir. that that guy, that story, people are going to be talking about him in twenty years. Heavily, heavily influential in your career, brother. Honestly, man. Um, yeah. I want to tell you a quote that I heard on the on the last season that really really caught my attention. I really love it. I don't know what it means to you, but I'm going to read it to you. It says, your purpose comes after the journey. The purpose is not the motivation. You don't go looking for your purpose. Your purpose finds you. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a real good quote, brother. Yeah, Abuelita. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, another OG that they took down in this. <laughs> yeah, I see, man. It was just like one, two. Like, oh, Lord. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they said, pow, pow. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, when I was reading it, uh, I knew that something was going to happen to me, but I didn't know. I didn't know about Abuelita. So when I was reading it and I got to Abuelita, I was like, because it doesn't play out the way that it does in the in, in the in the show. In the show, you're like, oh, she's not like in the in the script. And like, she's gonna get better. Oh, she's dead. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I I completely I completely believe that. You know, I. Your. My purpose is, has has changed. You know, um, when it was this selfish idea of of wanting to be an actor and just like this thing. Mm-hmm. And as I'm working towards that, yeah, I have a goal in mind. But now the idea of, that I didn't have when I was younger, but the idea of representation, you know, is now taking hold of it. The idea of uh, being a role model is now taken on top of it, you know. So I'm finding my purpose as I'm as I'm working, you know, to 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 be an actor. Uh, and I and I and I wish that what I could have gotten that that advice sooner, where it's like, all right, sure, have a goal, but 
you're not going to, you're not going to start off with your purpose. You're going to, that's going to come on to you. That's going to, you know, that's going to pile on top of you. Yeah. Beautiful quote. Beautiful yes, quote. Sir. Yes, sir. Brother, I have a question, man. I wanted to know what did the tattoo that you had on your arm that said R-I-P-L-R mean? What did that mean? Uh, that was for my, originally it was little Ricky, but then the, 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 it changed to my mother. Okay. <laughs> to, 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 yeah. Lydia, uh, Lydia, and then her last name. Yeah. I, I noticed y'all kept saying little Ricky and I was just like, man, it's always a little Ricky has to die, man. <laughs> man it's all good. It's all good, man. It's all good. No, Brother, Ricky. I want to get down to the real question, bro. The real Ready. questions. All right. Real question. All right. When are you coming out with your rap album, brother? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I mess um... with you. I mess with you, big bro. I mess with you. <laughs> I'm messing with you. I, I I heard you say that you're a fan. That you you're a fan of music. Yeah. You're working on music videos and stuff. Um, yeah. Are Are you a fan of Latino rap or corrido tumbao? Yes. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. are popping. Like who who are your favorite? Who are your favorite guys to listen to? Uh. Man, I, you know, I got stuck in the 90s. Look, Tribe Called Quest is something that I listen to, like, on repeat, wow. right? Wow. Um, I wish that I knew more Mexican. My cousin, uh, Joshua Macias, he does a lot of videos for rappers in, in Guadalajara. Mm. And sometimes he sends me stuff, and I'm like, yo, this is, like, this is sick. This is fire. And then I try, I try to listen to it, and then, like, I'll get through a couple... And then I just get like swept back to the nineties. Right. And right, I'm just right, like, right. you know, I'll be listening to that. Uh, you ever yeah, heard of mommy... Natanael Cano? No. Hey, he's Yo, I'm going to write bro. these down though. Please. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Natanael okay, Cano, otro... brother. Natanael. Yeah. Natanael Cano. And, and write, write this one down. Cause if you write this one down, you're going to be able to find a bunch of them. Rancho mm -hmm. Humilde. That's like the record label right there. Nice. That's a dope name too. Yeah, brother. I think I think you'll really enjoy their music, brother. Honestly, man. You know. Wait, pásame el nombre del del, del otro rapero. Uh, Natanael. Natanael. Okay. Yes. Cano. I think that's C A N O. Cano. Ba. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yo, bet I'm gonna I'm gonna get into it for sure. And and like the dope. Uh huh. Uh, Cultura Profetica was something that I was listening to a lot when I was doing uh, Spooky, and then Ooh. yeah, I got I got a I got a whole man. I was listening to some dark shit season yeah. one uh, to get into that mode. Yeah, but like I'm also, but also it's interesting because when you when you hear it's a lot of these uh, a lot of these artists go dark, but then they give you his, historical context as to why their their life is so dark, right? Yeah. Uh, that was not spooky, spooky Oscar. Even, even when you were speaking about um, the Chicanos protecting Mexicans mm -hmm. in that time period, I started thinking about how gangs in LA even started too as well. They started yeah. with the same thing to protect the neighborhood. And then things kind of switched around. Drugs got introduced to the neighborhoods. And, mm -hmm. you know, we are where we are today, you know. And yeah. uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of those members in those particular uh, mm -hmm. organizations and gangs that are trying to but switch the, narratives but the veteranos are still there you exactly. know and they're and and they're saying you know these are you know we gotta we gotta go back we don't have to just dismantle this whole organization we gotta yes. you know like even if you see even like i don't want to speak on it because i don't know completely but if you see some of the historical context of, of the bloods and the crips yes. and what they're doing now in compton and in inglewood yes some of them are community leaders that exactly. are changing the community for the better Yes, even sir. though they're still affiliated. Uh, yes, KDC, Luz Verde, was like wow. something that I was listening to like uh, a lot. Uh, Diablo, uh, Mr. Night Owl, Cartel de la Santa, uh, Mac Luca, uh, yeah, The Game, La Coca Nostra, Be Real, you know. Be those real, are kind of, of the people that, yeah, those are the kind of some of the people that I was listening to uh, getting ready for, for Oscar and, and you know. But uh, yeah, I want to expand my I want to expand my palette when it comes to that for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna definitely check into that myself, brother. I mean, so so okay. So now now in in this new series that you're in, you're in the mm -hmm. Selena series as Pete As Asturillo. 
Estudillo, yes. Estudillo, yes. He is a songwriter. Can you tell us a little about who he is and what do and and what what do you do in that role? Yeah, Pete, uh, Pete the Heat Estudillo is what they call him. Um, yeah, he was a uh, he was Selena's uh, writing partner and duetist. So anytime that they had a duet in Los Dinos, you know, he would sing. He would sing with Selena. And uh, yeah, it was a, like I said, it was a palate cleanser. It was a swing to the other side of the fences. You know, um, I enjoy, like, I like singing, you know, um, dance is not my strong suit, but, you know, take on a challenge. Right. 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 Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, that was another, uh, I love that the two things that I've done after coming and saying, yo, I'm not going to play, you know, stereotypical Latinos. I'm playing two Latinos and like in big series, but, um, but they are, but they are well-written. They're fully rounded people. You know, the, the, what I loved about Pete and, and, and the show specifically Selena, um, it talk, it like touches on a little bit, but they don't really disparage the fact that they're Latinos. They just live in this, you know, Southern border world you know, and they are what they are and they don't have to explain it to us. Like sometimes Selena, when she goes up to the executive, she's got to argue that whole, like, why am I just in the Latin market? Why am I not this? Why am I not that? But when they're on tour, they're speaking English with each other and they're singing in Spanish and they're going to like, you know, Northern Mexico and they're, and they're coming to El Paso. You know, uh, I love that duality and how their lives were just their lives and they would, you know, speak in Spanish, but they were talking about love, relationships, um family aspirations and whatnot uh where it wasn't so heavily loaded on the question of what it is to be latino in the united states they were just latino in the united states you know so i, I love that aspect of it and also and just learning about selena like i knew her on a surface level you know like everybody else kind of, well not like everybody else but like a lot like the majority of people in mexico she was a huge sensation in the united states in mexico it's like oh yeah la selena yeah for sure you yeah. know yeah. Uh, but idolized, then, uh, man. yeah, but now it's, yeah. And being part of it. And, you know, I know that people had their criticism and uh, like people are already going to have their criticisms on it, but when AB and Suzette, like the actual people, you know, zoomed us and talked to us and they said, yo, you guys, when I watch this series encapsulate what we went through, this, this is what, this is what, this is the relationship that we have with each other. Like, uh, J Lo's performance in, in 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 Selena is iconic, and it'll it'll live on forever. Mm -hmm. But that was a you know that was a snippet of her life. We right. show the perpetuity in two seasons. Yes, uh, yeah. and and to have and to have the family members tell us this is what it was like for Pete to hit me up, you know, and being like, "Yo, I always wanted to be tall. Thank you for doing that for me." <laughs> 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 yeah. And like having conversations and he's like, yo, you really hey. brought my, my essence to, to the stage. And I'm like, it almost doesn't matter what a critic's going to say. The real guy's telling me that I did a good job. Exactly. Exactly. And, and brother, I'll be honest with you. I was talking to my sister about it. She's a huge fan of the Selena series. And she's telling me, she's like, it's a lot more details in this than there is in the movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where? So start, we started watching it together. I was like, yo, my man's killing it, yo. <laughs> fire. this is fire yeah um bro man i mean it, it really looks like spooky changed his life around bro you know what i'm saying yeah. honestly yeah. he went from los santos to los dinos <laughs> uh, what was it the spooky to el buki is what they were saying spooky to el buki <laughs> <I'm not solid. laughs> yeah big brother man um i do want to say man um you are extremely mature and insightful, man. Um, um, you're incredibly talented as well, brother. Um, just speaking with you, I've learned so much. Um, I'm going to look up all those artists that you mentioned. I promise I will. Yeah. Um, Rancho Humilde, I'm going to be on that. Brother, I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to hit you up on the gram, brother. You know, hopefully yeah, yeah. You, you get my DM. I know you get a lot of them, but I'm going to send you oh, a yeah. bunch of artists to check Hold out. Hold on. Let, let me just follow you real quick so I can actually see it when you hit me up. No problem. ¿Cuál es tu Insta? It's uh, R-I-C-K uh -huh. under, underscore. Underscore. D-I-E. D-I-E. Z-E-L. Z E O. Mm -hmm. Rick and then is that top one? 
Yes, sir. That's the one. Orale. And, uh, and brother, while you're at it, can you please tell the, the viewers where they can find you on social media and any or any other platform? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter on A Julio Macias because I'm only one of many. Uh, that's it. That's <laughs> That's perfect, man. That's perfect, brother. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe, comment, like. Dale la campanita. Hit that little notification button, too, as well, so you can see when we drop a, another video. Uh, this was another episode of the Miko Experiment. Thank you very much to Julio Macias. You're a legend, brother. Appreciate you. Rick, a pleasure, man. Anytime you want me on here, just hit it up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Miko Experiment out. Take care, guys.